Hey everyone, Mike here from The Art of Guitar. Today will be Art of Drums. I was watching a Metallica live video from 2021 and uh, it was crazy. I heard the intro to Creeping Death and it completely freaked me out. I couldn't believe how different the intro has become over the years compared to the original. So it's one of my favorite songs. When I first got into Metallica, I first got Injustice for All, then Ride the Lightning. And I remember I would obsess over Creeping Death. So it's kind of solidified in my DNA a certain way. And so when I heard the newest version, the 2021 version, it kind of like shook me up a little bit. So today I want to compare the two and explain a little bit what the differences are. And I have to admit, it was kind of fun dissecting the newer version to see what he's doing these days, even though it doesn't make sense to me. Okay, so as the control version, let's go ahead and play close to what the album actually is, and then we'll do the new version. Here we go. Okay, since the album version doesn't have any hi-hats in between to keep time, I tried not to hit anything like that. I just tried to keep an internal metronome going on. Okay, now let's talk about what Lars does live these days. There are a lot of strange changes that are happening, uh, not only with what he's actually hitting, but the timing especially. So in the very beginning, he does a four count on the China, which is typical Lars. It sounds really cool. It's loud. It's an easy way to let the whole band know when to come in. He's doing the snare in the beginning, though, for some reason, instead of the floor tom. So you get this for the intro. At first, I thought that was just a mistake, but then I watched another live video from 2021. He does the same thing. Now, we have to talk about his left foot on the hi-hat because this is really confusing to me. So the first time, he does four hits with the hi-hat with his foot, which makes sense. <laughs> So all that is in time with the four hi-hats. It's what he does after he goes to the floor tom and hits the two crashes that weirds me out. Here's what he does. Did you hear how weird that timing was? He just throws in three closed hi-hats with his foot and then goes right to the floor tom and almost every single time he's coming in early on the floor tom. So for me, being a drummer, it makes me feel like I'm walking in a certain rhythm and all of a sudden I kind of trip forward. That's what the feeling is that uh, him coming in early does to me. So once again, he's going like this. It's like he just told himself, I have to throw in three hi-hats and then just go. After that, in one of the live versions, he goes back to the four hi-hats, so all is right again. Then he does the weird three thing again. So that whole intro is kind of weird feeling already to me, but then it gets worse. Now he does those two hits, and the band is supposed to lock in on that part. It's supposed to be really tight. But here's what he does for some reason. So that second hit he's doing is hitting early, which once again makes you feel like you're getting tripped up a little bit. Then he leaves a little bit of space like he's supposed to, but you could tell the band is a little unsure when he's going to hit that floor tom. If you listen really carefully, you could hear one of the guitars kind of coming in a little bit early every once in a while because it's just like hard to predict when to actually come in with that floor tom. <laughs> So if you do it, I'll use the hi-hat. If you do it with proper timing, it should sound like this. Now, I'm not saying you have to do the hi-hat like I was just doing. That was just to show you the, the grid. So without the hi-hat, it would be... See, it has a predictable groove to it, so the rest of the band knows when to come in. But Lars is going... And you could always tell because if you look at the rest of the band, they're all watching Lars like, now he's hitting it. You know, it's kind of this thing where you have to sink in to whatever Lars is doing. He's in control. Okay, then he just hits two Chinas, which is fine, into the next few hits. So it ends well, but that whole part in the middle is just like this big mystery to me. So let's put all these weird Lars idiosyncrasies together and see what we come up with. This is how he does it 2021 live. <laughs>
Now, this video is not meant to rip on Lars. I saw them play live a few years ago. They opened with Creeping Death and it had this energy to it that I wouldn't be able to reproduce myself, especially if I'm trying to be perfect like the album. For some reason, when Lars plays live, I know a lot of people call me a Lars apologist, but the weird things that he does that trips up most normal drummers, if you will, and makes people like me feel uncomfortable, they just seem to work live. I think that's because the rest of the band has learned how to gel around whatever Lars is doing, and it just makes it work. It has its own kind of charm. Like if you listen to the times when they brought in guest drummers uh, to fill in for Lars, it just isn't the same. You know, it just seems like it's a little too straightforward. It's it's really good, don't get me wrong. It's just not what Metallica is anymore. Now, if you bring Lars back into the picture, you're definitely going to feel like it's a little more loose. It's a little more erratic. But that's what Metallica is. It's that crazy organic monster I keep talking about now. And uh, I don't know, you can't deny that it's still heavy and very exciting to see and feel and experience live. All right, that was a lot of fun to decipher and to make this video for you guys. I'm going to choose a couple more intros from that latest concert that they put out. And uh, I'm going to compare them to the album versions and do a few rundowns on that. So that should be fun too. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. We'll catch you at the next video. See you later.